Hi everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I am excited to show you this game from the 2021 League Championship Tournament. And because my opponent was higher seed and the tournament is double elimination but only single game matches, my opponent gets to bid first. So we're bidding Dwarven Rings or Action Tokens and I'll include links to the rules for Dwarven Rings, but they're basically a, a re-roll of one of your action dice, and the action tokens are basically an extra action that you can use one time. So my opponent starts by bidding, starts off the bidding by bidding one ring, one Dwarven Ring, and one action token for the privilege of playing Shadow because we generally agree, most players generally agree that Shadow is slightly favored in the base game. And I accept because I was in the mood to play the Free Peoples. So here is the start of the game. The action token, this little thing is the action token and the, the thing next to it, to the far far right, is the uh, represents the Dwarven Ring. So we, my opponent allocates one eye and uh, rolls one more. We both get perfectly nice starting rolls. I'm perfectly fine to see Wisdom Valrond. You know, it's a, it's a playable card early in the game if you want to, and the combat effect can be good. So I... There's so much that can happen. I don't want to spend too long analyzing every round because this is a, an epic game. It's, it's very long. But... Um, if you know that you're going to move the fellowship, often it can be good to move right away. And as soon as I passed, so my first action I decided to pass because I didn't want to give away anything, but I, of course I'm going to move. And so, well, I guess maybe not, of course I could potentially separate fellow, you know, separate strider, I guess. But, um, I, uh, my opponent draws a character card which I think is great. If you don't know what, if you know that you're not gonna play either of these, then you know this is gonna be used for drawing cards, better to do it right away. And because of that, they drew Lure of the Ring. And then when I ended up moving, I, I moved as my second action, or I moved as my first action, but I passed first. So they had a chance to draw the card. I happened to get revealed right away, which is low chances, but you know, it can happen. And uh, I ended up losing Gandalf right away because I figured that there was a good chance they would bring Saruman into play this round and I would be able to make Strider the guide. I didn't want to risk taking a random companion and losing Strider right away. So I just took, I just lost Gandalf and I um, am going to use Strider's ability to hide and then I'll be able to move twice on turn one. So that's my plan right now. But because I took that initial pass right away, my opponent gets to now play Lure of the Ring, turn one, having a good chance, you know, to, to inflict. I mean, the average corruption here is m a pretty close to two for this card. And I think anytime you're playing a character card to inflict two corruption, that's that's pretty powerful. So this is not a good start. I just... A single one tile is missing, and I just lost Gandalf and Gimli. Fellowship is not off to a great start. But I hide. That's fine. My opponent goes ahead and gets some armies moving a little bit. Uh, this army heading up toward the Woodland Realm, which, you know, I think this is a good early game target. Um, and I move a second time. I get hit, this time not revealed, take two corruption, because I don't want to risk Strider and I don't have Fear Fire Foes or anything like that where I'd really value getting a Hobbit. So I just take the Corruption, and that gives me options in case I draw other healing cards, like something like I Will Go Alone. That's a nice thing to have a couple points of Corruption going there. If I get Othalos, maybe you know I could use that to heal. So not the best start getting hit twice, but you know hopefully my opponent's going to get Saruman, which they do. I get my armies into position and go ahead, and they get Saruman. So that was turn one, not the best for the fellowship, but still two progress, not horrible. All right, we prove the Swifter is always interesting. It gives you quite a few options to potentially get Strider. I mean, Aragorn crowned. And at this point, I'm really hoping to roll a Will of the West. That was really my, gam my gamble, my Gandalf gamble round one. And I do manage to roll 
a um, Will of the West. In fact, I roll two. So, you know, that's good news for me. To, to um, turn to Gandalf is great. So I start off, I don't know exactly what I could be doing here. Um, I think it makes sense to move, keep moving, even though there are four eyes moving once this turn and then proceeding to get Gandalf with the other die. This, this turn is going to be pretty straightforward. Another option that I did consider was because Sar Saruman, uh, sorry, because Sauron isn't at war yet, my opponent would have to muster once and then attack um, Old Forest Road once and then maybe have another card to attack into Woodland Realm um, this round. But but maybe they wouldn't even be able to attack into Woodland Realm this round. So I could alternately, instead of moving at all, use Wisdom of Elrond to muster the elves once, use this Will of the West to muster the elves again, maybe even use my action token to muster the elves a third time, and then furthermore have a muster left over to get an elven unit into Woodland Realm. So I'm certainly thinking about that. Um, you know, my other idea is that they're going to spend one muster to get uh, Sauron to war, use their only attack to attack into Old Forest Road, and then maybe I can muster the north a couple times and get the north to war so i i'm keeping i i think i decide to move here because i just want to keep moving keep the, the fellowship moving it's a little risky i think the chances of getting revealed i mean into moria is not great um but unfortunately i get hit and get revealed with an eye and so at this point you know i i really don't like the high pass because it just does not give a good uh, opportunity for the fellowship to heal um, and it makes it harder for Strider to get down to Minas Tirith and get crowned but landing revealed into Moria just does not does not appeal to me at all I think I, you know odds are taking an extra one or two corruption landing potentially getting hit again on the way out maybe even getting hit again with extra card drawing cards so uh, this is a pretty clear case of having to go uh, the high pass, which I do. So, though I, I really don't like it. Um, okay, I get Gandalf, and my opponent got Sauron to war, predictably. And then they play ring rates or abroad right here. And so, you know, now I see, okay, they're going to be able to take Dale. They're going to be able to take Woodland Realm. It's... it's um, Unfortunate for me that they got this card so early because otherwise I might have been able to defend uh, Dale of the Woodland Realm given their relatively bad role. But this is a great example of why um, some character cards can be powerful because they let you turn Palantirs into attacks. Um, there's a Grand, uh, not Grand. Well, there's Grand, and but um, there's also um, the Black Captain commands, and there's Ring Wraiths are abroad. So those are all character cards. All right, they put one Nazgul on the Fellowship, and then they bring their armies to bear. I play Wisdom of Elrond here because I don't know why. Maybe I just want to get, get some hits against that army. Um, unfortunately, I don't, but the North progresses towards war. So I hide the Fellowship using Strider's ability, and then they besiege Woodland Realm, uh, progressing the Elves towards war once, which... Now I think, okay, odds of them having another uh, attack, I think, are zero. I don't think there's any card that they could have right now that lets them um, attack again. And so I know that if I m use one muster right now to get the north towards war and then my, my action token to get the north all the way to war, at the start of next round, I can muster into Dale. And mustering, you know, an elite into Dale can definitely... Uh, be powerful and it's just this army is not that powerful right now so um, that's my plan so I go ahead and muster the north they play candles of corpses and get an extra corruption against the fellowship I've been hit three times in a row plus Gimli being lost to Lord of the Ring plus one from candles of corpses and really no opportunity for healing along the way even if I'm willing to take an extra step healing in Dale it's going to be captured and so there's just no effective way to heal the fellowship by going the high pass route. Um, so I'm definitely 
feeling like, oh, it's going to be tough. The only benefit is that the shadow military is going relatively slowly, but we'll see. And Gandalf turn two is good, but I can't really capitalize on it. I don't feel like I can capitalize on it that well. All right, alloc they allocate one eye and roll an extra, and then I, I get a nice roll here. Um, I needed at least one muster. I got one muster, um, so that's, that's good. And I um, put an elite into Dale. And now I have another muster and I have Will of the West. So if they're not attacking into Dale right away, I'm just going to keep mustering, piling up in Dale. So they have to, they're basically forced to attack right away into Dale. And um, they get zero hits. It is a it is a city, so you know that's not so crazy. A little below average, but not crazy. Um, and I get two hits back. And they, you know, this army is now weakened substantially. And so that's you know that's a great thing that Dale managed to do through through this muster. You know, I'm I was reluctant to use my my only action token because it gives you really nice tempo as you're approaching Mordor, but it it gained potentially gain me a lot of time here because now woodland realm is going to be tricky for them to take and they press the attack and of course i retreat i don't want to sit there and attack i want to keep this army alive to to harass them later and now they have a tough choice okay they only moved in one army and the Southrons and easterlings are still two away from war so if they want to get the witch king the Southrons and easterlings are not coming toward this round, I can attack potentially at the end of this round, recapture Dale and keep mustering in. And if they're not too careful, I could potentially get scouts and get into Dol Guldur, not too, you know, without too much difficulty. So it's definitely going to, I'm going to waste some of their time and I'm going to just go slowly with a fellowship one move at a time every round. That's my, that's sort of my plan, what I'm thinking right now at this point in the game. I'm also really tempted to try and get Aragorn down to Minas Tirith. Um, all right, so they're getting some armies going. I move the fellowship and I get hit again. So this is four four hits, every four movements and four hits, and uh, only a one. So that's not not too bad. Um, and then they they continue to move some armies around, and then I decide, okay, I should separate. I should separate Strider and go down, but I miscount. So that's actually not the right number. I can't get from Goblin's Gate all the way down to Minas Tirith, even with We Prove the Swifter. So we undo it um, because, you know. I And I had Great Company was my first card that I drew this game. Um, so, all right. Um, so instead, I decide to just draw a strategy card. I think that makes sense. Um, and I'm happy to see Scouts. Scouts just gives me plenty of flexibility. And maybe I'll move again with this um, Will of the West, but probably I'm just going to do military shenanigans to waste time up here because I don't really want to move more than once with the Fellowship. We'll see. My opponent gets the Witch King. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I attack into Dale here because, I don't know, I guess I want to use that Will of the West to be able to muster into Dale if this works. Not exactly sure what I'm thinking here. Um, I guess I was thinking that it would be hard for them to um, to counterattack back because I would have two units in a in a city. I'm not. I don't know exactly why I'm doing it here while they still have a uh, attack die. I probably should have waited until my last action. I think I was assuming on their last action they would save their character die, and so it wouldn't matter if I do it now or later. Um, okay. Oh, right, because I have scouts. Yeah, so that's what was going to happen. They were. I was going to attack. I was going to go into Dale. Then they would counterattack me back because if if they don't, then I play my will of the West and muster more in Dale, and so what they would do is they'd counterattack back into Dale. I would play scouts. And then with my last die, I use my will of the West to move my army into, you know, one away from Dole Golder. And then the start of next turn, I move into Dole Golder. So that's, that's why I'm doing this attack. Now it's a potentially a sneaky way to get all the way into Dole Golder. Okay. So I attack, <clears throat> I fail to kill that orc, which is fair. Only had about a 50% chance. <clears throat> My opponent doesn't inflict any damage. And then they retreat to Northern Rovanian. And when I see that, I'm like, 
oh no, that is not good because we know probably what's coming with their Palantir. And then they play their Palantir and this army teleports all the way up to Northern Rovania. So this just is like, that's just perfect tempo for them. Now they have a really nice use for this character uh, die to attack into Dale. I just, it was not like, that was not good. Um, I don't know that I could have foreseen that. Obviously, if, if I had managed to destroy that orc, this whole thing wouldn't have worked. If I had waited in action, this wouldn't have worked. But this was, I think, really nicely played for my opponent. They gave themselves the opportunity for this to happen. Um, so I think that was just that was just really cool. And we've had we've just seen some really good card play by my opponent, drawing right away and then saving this. So that was cool. Obviously not good for me, but cool. <laughs> um, at least I get to muster. So I muster into Dale. Um, you know, that army is pretty formidable. And then they obviously need to attack into, um, into Dale. And I, I have six cards and I think to myself, well, surely I should play something. I'm about to draw two more at the start of next turn. Um, but I want to save my scouts for when I'm in Old Forest Road, because clearly what's going to happen is they're going to attack into Dale. Um, hopefully won't get too many hits because they can only hit me on a six. I can retreat to Old Forest Road. And then when they attack again into Old Forest Road, that's when I can use my scouts. So I'm saving my scouts. And then otherwise, I don't want to use Daylight on something like this. They don't have that much leadership. It's not going to help that much. They're not playing a combat card. So I want to save my Daylight for a more important combat. And Brave Stand, Daring Defiance, Daring Defiance, and Advantageous Position do nothing. So even though I have six cards in my hand and I'm about to play and I'm about to draw two more, I still don't draw I still don't play any card here. So I think that's right. But um, okay. So no cards and no hits, and I get two hits back on the Witch King, but it doesn't really matter so much because they have such a big army. Um, I retreat to Old Forest Road, and we go on to next round. So I have eight cards in my hand. Obviously, I'm happy to see Dead Men of Dunharrow if I end up getting uh, Aragorn, which I've really been itching to do. And um, I think, well, I don't need Power of Tom Bombadil. I don't know that I really need Swords and Ariador. What do I end up discarding? discard um, Guahir and Power of Tom Bombadil. I think that makes sense. Guahir can be useful, um, but I felt like maybe Swords and Ariador would be more useful. And I, I do have um, We Prove the Swifter, which I'm planning on using. All right, so I declare the Fellowship and I roll a good mix. My opponent rolls a good mix. And, um, oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't realize that. I didn't roll enough musters but that's okay I have, I have wills of the west this is this is flexible i move the fellowship once because i want to get strider within range of Minas Tirith. um this is the first safe hunt which is nice and then um i my opponent before attacking to old forest road musters into dole golder which is good safety i don't know that one regular is enough but at least you don't you don't let um, me just waltz in, which I think is a nice play. And um, Isengard musters up, and then I go ahead and play We Prove the Swifter to bring Strider down, and I bring Boromir. And I think, I don't know, maybe this is a mistake at this point. I, I think I was kind of thinking to myself, let's just go, just go military. I'm just going to leave a few people in the Fellowship so that my opponent maybe keeps allocating eyes a few more times. But I'm I'm basically I'm kind of giving up on the fellowship right now, which is turn four. Maybe it's too early, but I just don't see a way for the healing to happen. Um, another idea that I could do is just keep Strider in there, keep Boromir in there, and move along one at a time, one turn at a time, and use these dice for for other things. Um, I think I just wasn't in the mood to play that sort of game. And because I have some practice going for military victories, I felt like my chances of winning a military victory, just like pretty intentionally building up a giant army and going for it, I have decent chances at that. Um, and it felt just like it would be more fun. I don't know if I actually have more chances doing it this way, but this is a pretty big turning point in the game to take that many that much corruption out of the fellowship. I'm kind of saying, you know, probably not going to go for it with the fellow with the I'm not going to be able to destroy the ring. And this is another reason like if I had gone through Moria, what you can do if you're going for a military um victory for a little bit, this is 
move five, right? One, two, three, four, five. That's Lorien. So at this point in the game, I'm at five corruption. I could declare into Lorien and then keep declaring into Lorien five turns in a row to heal up. And so, you know, it would have been more corruption going through Moria. I didn't know exactly how bad the hunt was going to go, but I don't know. Maybe it would have been better to risk Moria and then try and get into Lorien and heal up in Lorien. I don't know. Okay, so my opponent musters into South Dunland. I'm worried about something like Rage of the Dunlandings coming up or just, you know, get, moving this army somewhere. I don't know where it's going to go. I get Strider, and they just do some norm, normal movements. I'm very happy to see this army come to West Herondor because it means they don't have Corsairs of Umbar yet, though the South Rounds and Easterlings aren't even at war yet. So I have I have some time. And that's the other reason why I brought Boromir, because Boromir's special ability can muster Gondor. And that's just what I do here. It's the way I want to be using my second character die in the turn. Um, <clears throat> so that's, I think, pretty useful. All right. And then... Um, they have mustered this great army into Moria, so I think that was really pretty effective mustering in Isengard. And then um, I go ahead and start to get an elite in Carrick, thinking, okay, well, military victory, this you know, this is a decent army. If at any point they attack, I do have scouts, so I don't mind mustering up in Carrick. I'm, I'm eyeing Mount Gundabad. I'm eyeing Dol Guldur. I have some options here. All right. Um, but, you know, seeing this army in Moria, I am also worried that Lorien is going to come come under siege, and me, so maybe it was better not to have the Fellowship there. So, who knows? Um, I draw Celeborn's Galadrium, which is great, seeing that Lorien is likely to get attacked. I have Mithril Coat and Sting, which is good if I'm still hoping to maybe do something with the Fellowship. That's obviously a powerful, powerful card. Um, and I declare into Carrick because that is a settlement. It's not a city, it's a settlement, but that does mean cards like Foul Thing from the Deep, Orc Patrol, and Isildur's Bane, I believe, cannot be played um, in Carrick. So that's why I declare there. Also, by declaring and being at zero movement, it turns off cards like Nazgul Search or a Nazgul Strike or the ones that require the Fellowship to be at one or higher on the Fellowship track. Okay, um, allocated one eye and rolled one more, and I get this this very nice roll, very flexible. I can do a lot of what I want. I start by mustering Gondor all the way to war because I want to start mustering Gondor. That that seems good. My opponent starts getting the South Rounds and Easterlings to war, and I'm a little worried now about these two um, Wills of the West. Um, I go ahead and get another Northern Elite. My opponent now gets the South Rounds and Easterlings to war. And I, of course, you never want to leave two Wills of the West in case they have Day Without Dawn. Um, and I get a Gondor Elite and Minas Tirith. Um, and then I change my mind and I get a regular um, in Minas Tirith and Carrick. And then they play Day Without Dawn here. And this is a really... Um, interesting play because I've used all of my musters and therefore they now have three attacks they can get all the way to Dol Amroth even though I had gotten Gondor to war I used up my musters and so um, you know I think that was that was maybe a little bit of a misplay on my part I could have saved those musters and had a few more a few more options um, I am actually kind of happy to see day without dawn here because the chances of me rolling two or more or possibly even three or more wills of the west at some point in the next you know six rounds or seven rounds whatever however long the game's going to go is not that small if you look at that many rounds and so i'm happy to have it out of the way it's going to give me flexibility i don't love it but if this army in west toronto marches onto dual amroth I don't even mind that much because then I can muster up and go take Umbar while this army is taking Dol, Dol Amroth. And at this point in the game, I'm happy to make that trade because I can go from Mount Gundabad and Umbar and be fine with that. Because the Shadow Military is going slow enough that, that I would be at four and they would not be at ten. Okay, so they go ahead and um, move armies into Dimraldale and Minas Morgul. And um, I play Celeborn's Galadrium here because I want to cycle into more strategy cards, see what I get. Um, and then um, 
they attack into Lorien here. Um, you know, I think that makes sense. Um, this is a pretty seven point army. This is a seven point army. Um, but I end up doing something a little bit crazy, which is a field battle and then playing scouts because I'm going for a military victory. And this is a sizable army. Um, particularly, you know, this, this army in Parth Celebrant can combine down in Minas Tirith, can combine with the Northern army. So, um, I would rather have this army out and about causing trouble. It does give up two victory points. I don't love that, but Shadow only has one victory point and they're not close enough to getting to 10 that I'm super worried about it. Maybe it's a mistake, but I just don't want my armies bottled up. I think this is going to end up costing them more time and um, just will give me more options for actual win actually winning the game. Also, there's a super weird situation, which, which is that the elves have only been attacked once in Woodland Realm and now once in Lorien. So they're not actually at war because I haven't mustered them at all. And so we're in this crazy situation where um, I just played scouts out of Lorien and my opponent chooses to not move in. <laughs> which they're actually kind of makes sense here because um i can't muster anything into lorian i've already played Celeborn's galadrim um you know i could maybe use my one character die to move into move them back into lorian um and we could play this dance again but um you know that's anyway i don't i don't do that i i pass and then they um delay and play the ring is mine and i'm always happy to see you know even in my mind i'm, I'm going for a, a military victory at this point but shadow still doesn't know for sure what i'm going to do and if they completely ignore the fellowship then i might start making progress again so um it's not bad that they would play something like that and the red tiles are always great and now at this point i move the fellowship and I'm not exactly sure why I do that. I guess I still have some hope. I don't know why it made sense to bring Boromir down and then still move the Fellowship at this point. I, I'm not sure about all this. Maybe I should have moved back into Lorien. Maybe I should have moved to Western Brownlands with um, with this army. I think I didn't want to move this Parth Celebrant army into Western Brownlands to threaten Dol Guldur while my opponent still had an army die because I felt like they could just use one die to move into Lorien and one die to move the rest to, to move one or one orc into Lorien and then another half of the army movement to move the rest of the army into South Anduin Vale. And then if I, you know, attacked gold, put Dol Guldur under siege with the elves, they could then just throw this army into Dol Guldur and Lorien would be captured. This army would be weak and it just, it, it wasn't good enough. So I think I just wanted to wait and sort of play like I had um, scouts, even though I don't have another scouts, um, but sort of convey that I had another scouts by being patient and sort of baiting them into attack me. So I, th I think my opponent was just being cautious to not attack again. And, um, I successfully move with the fellowship because now they're going to have to sort of allocate another eye at the start of the next round. They split this army in an interesting way, leaving a regular and um, an elite into Lorien. I'm not sure exactly what that does. This is an interesting split. I mean, it's not bad to have armies about. Um, it makes me think that they're going to get four, five regulars total into Dol Golder, which honestly I'm happy about because I, I know I can defeat five regulars if I merge this um, army in Parth Celebrant and this army from Old Forest Road down in Dol Golder. I'm feeling fine about that. All right, so um, I have some great cards here, and this is truly the moment that I give up on the ring because if you ever discard Mithril Coat and Sting, which is the one of the most powerful uh, cards to protect the fellowship, destroying the ring, you, you sort of know you're not destroying the ring. Now, my opponent doesn't know that, but I decide to get rid of, um, oh, I didn't get, sorry, I got rid of Fear Fire Foes. That's interesting. So I'm saving Mithrocote and Sting. In my mind, I guess I still have some hope of uh, destroying destroying the ring, but this is a, that's foreshadowing. I might be discarding Mithrocote and Sting later. Um, okay, my opponent allocates one eye and rolls two more, and I get this, you know, 
fine roll. I if maybe a few more palantirs than I want, but not not horrible. I do have gray company, so you know this is a good use for if I need a character die, um, that can convert it into strategy cards. So they're good. Um, I also have helped on look for, so I could be doing some cool things to rescue Woodland Realm, but I don't really believe that I'm destroying the ring, and so I'm I'm kind of focusing on getting my victory points faster than Shadow is getting their victory points instead of trying to sort of just save Woodland Realm. All right, I go ahead and use the Dwarven Ring here because I feel like it's a few too many Palantirs. I don't know exactly what I'm looking for. I guess I'm looking for army. I'm, I'm looking for attacks. So either a character die, an army movement, or a Will of the West. And I'm not scared of getting too many Wills of the West because I know Day Without Dawn is gone. All right, so I'm, I think I, I guess I wanted that character die. I don't, in looking at this now, I don't know why that was really truly necessary, but all right, so I start with an army movement going into um, Western Brownlands and then merging my Carrick um, and Old Forest Road army into Old Forest Road. And then um, my opponent wants to get their armies into Dol Golder. And quite honestly, I'm happy with that, as I mentioned. And I go ahead and put them under siege, and then they go into siege. So this is good. And then my opponent is trying to figure out what to do. They muster into Moria. Okay, that's fine. And then um, what do I do? I muster into uh, Minas Tirith. And then I move into Osgiliath. So I guess at this point, I'm thinking, like, it's going to be pretty hard for my opponent to defend all of Mordor um, and also Dol Golder. So they play Horde from the East in South Rune. I think that's cool. And then I play Grey Company here. That's cool. Get to draw more strategy cards. Riders of Theoden, very powerful combat effect. And Thranduil's Archers. Love to see Thranduil's Archers. And here is the moment that I discard Mithril Coat and Sting. So I'm just like going all out military. That's my plan. And um, you can see that now with Thranduil's Archers and Helped Unlook For, I really could get a pretty good attack against um, the Witch King in Woodland Realm. But that's just not the direction I'm going. I'm just trying to take Dol Golder. So, um, all right, they muster into Angmar and Far Harad. Okay, you know, not totally crazy. I don't, it, it's very hard to actually win as free peoples with Angmar and Far Harad just because you can't always hold them and their muster points very nearby them. So, I don't know about that, but okay. And then I move my armies. I leave one behind in Old Forest Road. Maybe that's a mistake, but it will slow down the Witch King's army. And they do have an army action here. So I think that's why. And then I leave one unit in Asgiliath for the same reason. So they can't they can't basically make progress toward um, Dol Golder and toward North Athelion simultaneously. And so next turn, if I basically have an army movement into Dol Golder, that's one. And then an attack, that's two. Dagger Lad is three. Moranon is four. And then attack into Moranon is five. Like, I, I, if I have four attacks plus an Elven Ring next turn, I have a good chance of winning next turn. Um, so that's sort of why I'm going for it here. Okay. And yes, it leaves Minas Tirith open, but like even with Minas Tirith and with Woodland Realm and with Dale and with Pilar Gear, that's still not 10. So it's, you know, you have to be careful with the Free People's Military Victory if you leave open too many of your own strongholds. But um, Gondor's at war. If they had attacked into Osgiliath, I could have mustered in Minas Tirith. So, all right. They move into South Rune. I think that makes sense. I should be fast enough, I think, to get into Dagor Lad and then Moranon and then continue into Gorgoroth and Baradur if I have to. And I have powerful, um, powerful combat cards here. Heroic Death just soaks up, especially with Boromir, two or three hits. This is this is a much more effective army than it than it looks like. I mean, it probably looks like a pretty effective army. <laughs> so, but my combat cards are good. I have really good combat cards here. 
Okay, so um, they get some good mustering cards. Mighty Attack obviously is really quite nice. Faramir's Rangers, always happy to see. Wouldn't have minded seeing that last turn. This is a tough set of cards to figure out what to discard. I really don't know. Um, yeah, who knows? So I think what do I end up discarding? Um, you could think about what would you discard here? I mean, these are eight just excellent cards. Um, my opponent notes that I did not move the Fellowship last turn, and therefore... Um, they allocate no eyes, which is absolutely correct. I'm going for a military victory. Clearly, they should not allocate eyes, and they allocate zero eyes and only roll one. So this is, you know, that's totally the correct choice, and it's lucky at this point they're, they don't want to roll eyes. In terms of my discard, I got rid of Sudden Strike, which is Dead Men of Dunharrow, obviously a really nice card, but, I, you know, I'm in the process of trying to win with um, Strider and help and no quarter. So I think I do that because I'm thinking this army, the Northern army combined with the Elven army is going to be seven elites, two leadership and two, two regulars. Like that's going to be a super powerful army be, should be able to take out Dol Guldur in one round of combat for sure. Aragorn's army might get depleted pretty much trying to take Morn on. I think it should be able to take Morn on, but it might be kind of close. And so I'm thinking, all right, save the daylights because then when I'm defending the counterattack, because there probably will be a counterattack, um, I'll have I'll have some defensive cards, and and the benefit that I get from sudden strike is you know five sixths of a hit, really because I only have four um, four sixths of a hit, which is like nice but not that big a deal. Because and, and four sixths because I only hit on sixes because I'm attacking into a siege. So that's why the sudden strike only hits on a six when you're attacking into a siege. And the no quarter, obviously good. One extra hit is good. Maybe I should have saved that, but you know, I'm not guaranteed an extra hit. I don't know. Maybe no quarter was better than a second daylight. Um Okay, and I roll only two attacks, which is really not what you'd expect right? I have four sides of my dice that have attacks and I needed to roll four plus a ring to have enough attacks to be able to take out, to be able to take out more and on. And so seeing this, I know for sure I cannot take out more and on and, um, also Dole Golder this round. And, and, you know, that's really disappointing. It would have been great if my opponent rolled a bunch of eyes and I rolled at least four attacks, which is what we'd expect. Um, but it doesn't happen. And so this is this sometimes can happen, you know, when you're going with a fellowship and you need a bunch of character dice and you don't roll them. That that can happen with military victory attempts as well. So um, this is good to sort of live with it. I whine a little bit. And then I play Faramir's Rangers here. I'm not exactly sure why. I guess... Um, I guess I haven't really come to terms yet quite with what's going on. Um... And I wanted to make sure I had a chance to play Faramir's Rangers. And I'm thinking maybe my opponent's going to attack into North Athelion and I'll get to retreat back to Osgiliath for, you know, as part of that attack. Um, my opponent moves armies to defend Mordor. I think that makes sense. But, um, yeah, I think that's fine. I'm, I'm certainly eyeing Mordor. I play at this point Thrandall's Archers because... Um, you know, I know I'm not going to win this turn, so defending my strongholds a little bit more, especially since I gave up Lorien and Minas Tirith is pretty weak. I think that makes sense. Um, and then my opponent continues to move armies. And now at this point, Mordor is looking pretty good. Um, one thing that's a little strange about this situation is that I could right now at this moment attack into Minas Morgul. And because there's no army in Gorgoroth, um, my opponent could not um, safely counterattack into Minus Morgul. So, for instance, I attack Minus Morgul. Maybe we have one round of field battle. Um, but then they're going to have to retreat into a siege. And now I have my army in Minus Morgul. They have an army in South Athelion right outside it. But if this army in South Athelion attacks into um, Minus Morgul, then I can just retreat either with scouts or have the field battle, whatever, into Gorgoroth. 
Um, you know, maybe they don't press the first round of combat and therefore I couldn't retreat into Gorgoroth. But if I have scouts, I really can retreat into Gorgoroth and then take Baradur for free. So I probably would have left one army in Gorgoroth as shadow here just to prevent that trick so that this army in South Athelion can then throw itself against the besieging army. Um, okay, I muster into Minas Tirith because what else am I going to do? I think I'm just waiting to see. I, I don't think this makes a lot of sense. My opponent has a lot of army movements, and I think given sort of where they got, maybe they could just go and crash into Asgiliath and then get, get Minas Tirith under siege with this army in in South Athelion and just Strider doesn't have enough juice to get into Mordor. I don't know. Maybe I would end up taking minus Morgul and that would not be good for Shadow because this army and Dagger Lad would take too long to get to minus Morgul to retake it. So yeah, maybe that maybe it makes sense. Maybe Minas Tirith is safer than I think, but I still want to muster up there if I'm gonna go do something else. All right, Gron shows up and takes Woodland Realm. I feel glad that I got um that extra elite in there before this happens and you know they get whittled down a bit and uh you know would have preferred for that combat to go longer i don't know exactly what the averages would be but it doesn't seem crazy um i basically just let woodland Rome fall without playing a bunch of cards because i want to make sure that i you know take my strongholds and give shadow theirs but that's okay for me all right so they attack into old forest road after taking woodland realm which I think makes sense. Um, I I now am a little scared of the Witch King because I don't want this army to come sort of harass my army. They have good leadership. So I go ahead and do an army movement and I retreat back out of North Athelion and say to myself, okay, I'm going to wait for future opportunities. We don't know what's going to happen. Maybe I can go down to Umbar. I'm going to take Dol Golder this turn and then leave myself this giant army in Osgiliath to do things with later. We'll see. I do have through a day and a night. So this army in Osgiliath can get up to Moria. I can get, you know, over to Orthanc even. Like there's a lot of places I can go with this army with through a day and a night. Okay, so they consolidate their armies and they move into um, they move the Witch King's army to Narrows of the Forest. And at this point, I want to take Dol Guldur. That's part of my strategy of winning the game. I need to get some victory points. Um, and I pass here. I don't know why I did that. I guess I thought the Witch King, if the Witch King army wants to attack into me here, I'll defeat the Witch King. That's okay. So, all right, I guess that makes sense. And I knew they had already played the move three spaces card, Shadows Gather, Shadows Lengthen. I can't remember. I think Shadows Gather. Um, anyway, I muster more into Gondor, and my opponent starts mustering in Orthanc, and then I decide to... <laughs> I decide to separate the Strider, or, or Legolas and the two Hobbits into Dol Guldur. I think that's why. I didn't want to attack into Dol Guldur this round um, without having full leadership contingent. And I've really given up on the fellowship. My opponent has stopped allocating eyes. So, you know, we're all on the same page. I'm going for a military victory. Um, let's put those companions to good work. And then what happens? I guess my opponent attacks with the Witch King into this army that now has more companions. I wish at this point I still had Mithril Coat and Sting. I could take out the Witch King. That'd be fun. I wish that, um, you know, maybe I should have saved Gwahir from so so long ago. I could have um, separated those companions with a Palantir instead. I don't know. Um, so they play a character card, right? I'm expecting um, the one, Dread and Despair. Um and I'm also now wishing, ooh, I wish I had saved um, Sudden Strike, right? But that's the way it goes. I'm, I'm still happy to play Daylight here. I want this army to be as large as possible. Um, they do play Dread and Despair, and um, they get one hit, and I get one hit, so I'm okay with that. And then they press, and obviously I'm going to stay. I'm, I'm, I'm expecting another Dread and Despair, Um I play my other Daylight. So this is exactly sort of the situation that I was expecting for Daylight, um, basically to keep this army or this army, either one, the, the army in Dol Guldur or the army in Osgiliath, alive as part of the counterattack. My opponent only plays Foul Stench. And so now I'm going to get to roll five dice. I'm expecting to get about two hits on fives. 
Um, and I end up getting my opponent gets two, which is about right, and I get three, uh, which is a little above average, but not like that crazy. Um, and then they take three regulars instead of downgrading the elite. So they're only rolling two dice. And now, like, that army is sitting there with the Witch King and five Nazgul right next to my um, giant army with companions in it. So um, I'm not exactly sure what they were thinking here. Uh, but, you know, I guess I'll try and take advantage of it. So they allocate no eyes, roll two. And then I get a fairly average roll. Again, still slightly low on the attacks. But um, I am going to make my attack into the Witch King. And because I drew power too great, I can play no quarter. And now I only need two hits. And the chances of getting two hits on 10 dice on fives is pretty good. They play foul stench, which I think is a good choice. So I only have five dice, not 10 dice. Um, but I roll two hits. And so with no quarter, that's enough to destroy the Witch King. They roll two dice and don't hit me at all. And so... Uh, bye bye Witch King. That obviously is great for me. And things like this can happen when you make military victory attempts. I think my opponent played a little risky there. Um, I probably wouldn't have pressed the attack if I didn't have another Dread and Despair in hand. Um, but, you know, now now I'm like, okay, I'm going to leave um, Mordor alone and head head this Osgiliath army all the way up to Moria and, and Lorien. Uh, I do have... Um, through a day and a night. So that's going to be, that's going to be great. My opponent then plays Shadows on Misty Mountains. Obviously, I'm not happy to see that. That's just awesome mustering. And um, I go ahead and attack into, no, what am I doing? I'm mustering more Gondor. Okay. So my force pool in Gondor now has one regular in it. Um, I don't know exactly what I was thinking there. Uh, I guess I just want to have Minas Tirith ready to defend itself when this army in Osgiliath goes off to the north. Um, so, fair enough. I don't know why I didn't put it in Dol Amroth instead of Pilargir. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to shuffle these armies in Pilargir into the Osgiliath army. I guess we'll find out. All right, so my opponent um, gets this army uh, merged up in Dimrald Dale. And presumably they're going to come and try and retake... Um, Dol, Dol Golder after I take it. Um, so at this point, I want to get this army into the siege so that um, presumably next round, I will have enough actions to get all the way to Moria. But I'm happy for this army to be leaving uh, Dimrald Dale and trying to come over to Dol Golder. Um, I can't, I'm guessing my opponent doesn't realize that the army in Osgiliath can march all the way up to Moria. I'm a little confused why maybe this army in North Athelion doesn't head up also to Dol Golder. Um, you know, it's one, two, three spaces away for that. And then you leave um, Moria well, better defended. I guess they're a little worried about um, leaving Mori uh, Mordor too weak because there are three strongholds there and it's probably hard to defend all three without if this army in North Athelion leaves. So I can I can understand that. I go ahead and try and attack Dol Golder. I play Mighty Attack here because getting that initial hit is going to reduce their um, counterattack damage against me. So I'm happy to try and get hits early. Um, they play Devil Re of Orthanc on the defense, which I think is pretty cool. I haven't seen that too much. Um, but I roll well. I get two hits. Uh, you know, that's not that crazy on, on um, 10 dice. You're going to probably roll one and a half hits. So I get two hits plus the automatic one from Mighty Attack. And uh, my opponent complains that this game is a bit backwards. Fair enough. Um, and they only get one hit against me. So three hits right away. And I decide to go ahead and press here because uh, I want to be more efficient with my dice. I want to use this Will of the West to get this army in Osgiliath um, moving north. And I have this Palantir with through a day and a night to get the army moving north again. So I can really be in striking distance of, of Moria and hopefully sort of surprise them. All right, so I press, and then uh, another Devil Re of Orthanc, but they only have two dice to roll. Um, they get one hit against me. I get one, and I press again, and then uh, there we go. So, um, you know, I think that was probably pretty good for me, but not, like, so crazy out, out of the ordinary. When you only have five regulars, they can 
you know, as soon as you get a couple of hits, they're uh, they're rolling many fewer dice, um, and there's no leadership there. Okay, so now this army uh, from Dimrel Dale is coming to retake Dol Guldur, which seemed like my opponent's plan. Very happy to see it, and then my opponent gets worried about um, Umbar and moves the army from South Athelion to West Herondor to defend Umbar, which isn't completely wrong, but um, I think that I would have been likely, if I was going for Umbar, I would have attacked into West Herondor, and then at that moment, my opponent could have counterattacked from South Athelion, um, and still has a decent army in Umbar. So I, I think it's just, it's kind of hard to see. From Osgiliath, you're one, two, three, four, five spaces away from Moria. Um, so I can see why you wouldn't sort of think this army is going up to Moria, but that's one of the advantages of free people military victory. You just have a lot of flexibility. And and that's why, even though I had a chance to win, I guess, back on turn six, if I had rolled more attacks, taking Morin on, I sort of kept my army intact. I retreated back to Asgiliath, and now I'm going to have another chance to win in Moria because my opponent is going to take this um, army in South Anduin Vale and, and take Dol Guldur. All right, probably. That's my plan. So at this point, I move to Druid and Forest. I'm not sure why I didn't um, spend one more muster. Ah, I know why. Because I'm planning on using a ring now. So it looked like I only had one army movement. But in fact, I'm going to be able to move this army four spaces this round. Um, I'm going to use an army movement. I'm going to use the Will of the West to do army movement to Druid and Forest. Um, and then I think I did a uh, Pilar gear to Asgiliath. And then I'm going to do um, the, the Through a Day and a Night into Parth Celebrant. And then I'm going to use a ring to do an army movement taking Lorien and Dimmerdale. So that's my plan. We'll see how it goes. But that's why I didn't use this muster first and I started my, I started my movement at this point. All right, my opponent starts to get... Um, a little suspicious, they attack into Fords of Eisen. Um, and they didn't attack this army from South Anduin Vale into Dol Guldur. I would have loved if this army in South um, uh, South Anduin Vale attacked into Dol Guldur because there's no way this army is going to take, uh, that army is going to take my four, four elite, three, uh, five leadership, three companion uh, army. There's just no way that's happening. But, but they might have tried. Uh, in desperation, and I wish they would have done that and it would have cleared the way for Moria. But instead, they move out of Orthanc and they get two hits, which is really nice because they take out that contingent in Fords of Eisen and um, they leave one regular behind in Orthanc. I think maybe that makes sense just to avoid um, avoid this army marching in. Um, and... I, at this point, I, I can't delay anymore, so I go ahead and play through a day and a night. And I get to Parth Celebrant, and now my opponent sees what's happening, um, and uh, Lorian, I make a note that Lorian has just been empty this whole game. Nobody nobody wants Lorian. Um, and my opponent then retreats their army back to Dimrel Dale, which I think is good, and then moves out of Umbar into West Herondor. And now I go ahead and use my ring. I take my army and recapture Lorien. I have enough of a mustering pool for the elves to be able to muster another elite into Lorien before I make my attack into Moria or possibly go all the way up to Mount Gundabad. That's theoretically possible. Or maybe reverse direction and go back down to Orthanc. I still have options. Um, and now here is what I would say is my first major mistake of the game, which is I don't move this army from Westamnet into... Um, Helm's Deep. And I, th I think it makes sense. You know, obviously, um, this is probably going to lose anyway. But this army, um, you know, only two regulars and one elite is probably not enough. But this army is relatively weak in Fords of Aizen. And I kind of want my opponent to, to both deplete this army and maybe just have trouble retaking, um, you know, taking all their victory points. Um, I've mustered Gondor so much that it's hard to really defend Gondor at this point. Um, and they do, my opponent has mobilized significant armies outside of Gondor. Um, and now I've run away from Gondor with this army trying to win the game, but there's going to be a little bit of race to victory points. 
All right. So um, because of that, my opponent now takes Helm's Deep and um, is going to be able to, I think, um, win that siege very easily, even only rolling four dice. So I, I think that was I think that was a mistake, uh, which is unfortunate. All right, I do have Brave Stand, which is nice, and um, Guards of the Citadel, not particularly useful, but the charge effect could be powerful, and um, we keep going. So my opponent now is only rolling eight dice. They roll two eyes, again, allocating none, which is obviously correct, and um, I roll only one attack here. So, you know, I, there have just been a couple moments in the game where I've really had chances to win, but on the turn that I need, you know, just a reasonable number of attacks, I mean, even three attacks would have given me a shot at Moria. Um, I would have, I would have been able to had a chance at it, but now only rolling one attack, um, there's no way, even with a ring that I can take Moria this turn. So, you know, that's disappointing. Um, and my opponent rolled tons of attacks, uh, which lets them move armies wherever they need to. So I start by drawing a character card, and I think this is, again, a mistake. If I had been um, thinking more clearly, and, and at this point it's starting to get relatively late, um, if I had been thinking more clearly, I would have realized that I need, uh, there are a lot of strategy cards that I could draw here that would be useful. Um, Immer Hill of Dol Amroth, I think is potentially useful. Kyrdan's Ships is potentially quite useful. Um, Scouts, again, could be useful, getting this regular from Osgiliath into, into Minas Tirith or Pelargir into Lamadon, um, just to make it a little bit harder here. Um, I'm obviously trying to draw Ents, right? That's, that's what I want to draw here. I, I would love to kill Saruman off. Um, I haven't drawn an Ent the whole game, and it's a little sad with as many character cards as I've drawn. Relatively unlikely that I haven't drawn an Ent. Um, so it's not crazy that I tried to draw an Ent. It's only a 20% chance because there are three of them and I had 15 cards in the deck. But I think probably strategy cards, there are more strategy cards that would be useful. And, um, you know, this is completely useful uh, for this point in the game. Um, Smeagol helps nice master. Normally a great card if you're trying to destroy the ring, but I'm not. All right, so my opponent moves um, moves Nazgul around because they just they didn't get any musters, but they got a lot of character dice. I again draw a character card, and this is useful. Andrew, obviously very powerful combat effect, so maybe it's not so crazy that I continue to draw character cards. Um, you know, the combat effect of Heroic Death is really powerful, but I've, I think I've already drawn one. Um, two, actually, obviously. I have two right here. So I can't remember if there are two or three total in the deck, but um, I just don't think there are that many character cards that help me as much as strategy cards here, particularly because I have these musters and I can't really muster Gondor. All right, well, let's see what happens. Um, my opponent attacks into Pilar gear. They miss, and I retreat into Asgiliath, hoping that at least one of them is going to get into Minas Tirith, and that my opponent is going to think that I have Cirdan's ships, which I really would like to have. Um, but yeah, that was dumb. Okay, so I attack into Dimrald Dale. Um, I muster an elite first, uh, Elven elite first, and then my opponent. Uh, moves, retreats out of Dimrald Dale, which I think is right because it pro, it pro, um, it prolongs that army without letting me hit it on fives. And um, and then I muster a Gondor leader into Minas Tirith and my last Gondor regular into Dol Amroth. And so, you know, I think at this point my opponent knows I don't have Cairdan ships. I don't really know why I didn't try and draw strategy cards there, but I get I wanted an end, so be it. Okay, my opponent takes uh, Dol Amroth, or gets it under siege, and then I attack into Dimrald Dale. Um, I, get, I destroy the orc and leave one regular this time in Lorien, not completely undefended. Maybe, given that I did not have Cirdan's ships, maybe I should have mustered an elite into Lorien first, that last elven elite, 
into Lorien and then done this attack, I would have had one extra, one extra elite. Um, but it would have wasted a regular. Um, so because my army was already full, so I think I, th I I feel like this is a pretty big army. It should be enough to take Moria, given my combat cards of Andoril and Charge and Heroic Deaths. Um, so, okay, my opponent attacks into um, Dol Amroth and uh, manages to take it with very few casualties. But I had no leadership in there, and, you know, that makes sense. I don't feel too bad now about not having cared in ships because it wasn't going to withstand that attack uh, anyway. So my opponent thinks about, I attack into Moria using um, my second-to-last ring because my opponent already has one ring. So once they have one, giving them a second one doesn't make that big of a difference, and they already have an attack this turn anyway. So... Um, I attack into Moria. They don't even bother having a field battle, even though they had two extra hit points, which obviously was a great choice on their part because I had charge and could have done way more than um, two. So I think that was a really good choice on their part, and they retreat into Moria. And then they get armies moving towards um, towards Minas Tirith and towards Gondor. So b what, what I wished would have happened was this was the round that I tried to win the game, um, and we had this battle in Moria, but, um, because I just didn't roll enough attacks now shadow is up to seven, six victory points. And if they take Minas Tirith and they take Helm's Deep next round, because I also didn't get those extra units into Helm's Deep, um, they will be able to, um, win the game, even if I get to four victory points. So I, I'm cursing my action dice, uh, on the two key rounds, but sometimes that happens. All right, um, I draw more cards, and then the uh, strategy deck taunts me by giving me Cured and Ships, but Charge is still, you know, not a bad effect. Obviously, I'm going to discard um, Smeagol Helps, Nice Master, and then my second discard is Cured and Ships. You know, I don't really need Guards of the Citadel either, but um, I was upset at Cured for showing up late, so uh, I discarded him. Uh, I'm thinking that Sudden Strike is slightly better than Charge in this situation in trying to take Moria because after uh, the first round of combat, I potentially am going to be less than five elites, but I'll still have five leadership. Also thematically appropriate, Challenge of the King. I'm attacking it to Moria. Seems, seems pleasant. So I'm feeling pretty good about these combat cards to take out... Um, to take out Moria, even though it's a very powerful 10 hit points, I have 14 hit points and five leadership, plus some automatic hits from Andril and a bunch of um, cards. So um, no eyes and they roll no eyes. So that's really good. And then I get a fairly balanced roll. Um, my opponent laughs that I could, you know, notes that I could run to Mordor safely. Obviously, I'm trying to win with a military victory. This army in Dead Marshes, I'm not scared of coming up to Dol Guldur. That my army in Dol Guldur will be able to hold. Um, what I'm worried about is them getting to 10 victory points while I get to 4 victory points. So I need to think of some way to hold Minas Tirith and also simultaneously um, take out um, Moria and these, these extra, um, these extra muster dice, I'm, n are not that useful to me because, um, I don't have more Gondorian units to muster. Um, and that's where the action is right now. And so I don't know, I, I sort of, uh, glossed over it earlier, but if I had saved fear, fire foes, uh, it would have given me an option to move characters, um, with a muster, which can be a bit of a surprise. And so, you know, getting Gandalf down to Minas Tirith could potentially make a big difference. I have two heroic deaths, and so Gandalf can be one heroic death in Minas Tirith. And um, also, if my opponent brings a bunch of Nazgul to bear on Minas Tirith, which I think they should, um, that will also counteract that. Um I'm regretting again the the musters in Pilar gear into you know that they ended up moving into Osgiliath, just not that useful. It probably if I had used my muster a little more um, <clears throat> effectively, just mustering into Minas Tirith directly and Dol Amroth um, instead of into Pilar gear, then I wouldn't have this issue of only four four um, 
four units in Minas Tirith instead of five, the full five. Okay, so um, I think for a bit, and um, I decide to start by attacking Moria. And I think the reason why I do that now is I want to see how the attack goes and if I'm going to need to spend all of these attack dice doing it or if I can just press and win the attack. Um, and I want to know if I have extra um, movement from... Um, if I'm going to have extra dice to be able to then move Gandalf into Minas Tirith before this army from Dead Marshes arrives. So ideally what I want to do is take Moria with one die. Also, it would be possible for my opponent to bring Nazgul into um, Moria uh, with a character die. So, so for all those reasons, I want to take out Moria right away and then see what is left. Um, I, I play charge because this is the round that I'm going to have um, five dice i roll um I, you're only hitting on sixes so because i'm attacking into a siege but i get one um, which is about what would we expect when when rolling um five dice and hitting on sixes and then i get two more sixes so i got three hits um right off the bat and um my opponent gets two hits back and um they reduce um they reduce their elites. So at this point, I'm thinking seven hit points against 12 hit points, plus I have two automatic hits from Andril, plus I have Sudden Strike and Heroic Death. It feels like, and I have two champion, two uh, Captains of the West in Aragorn and Boromir. So I don't know exactly what the odds are of the battle at this point, but in the interest of trying to defeat them in a single die, I press here. Maybe what I should have done is just not press and then waited. Um, there is a um, shadow card that lets you upgrade two orc regulars into two orc elites, um, Sauron regulars into Sauron elites. And so for that reason also, I decide... Let's press. I should be able to go for it. Um, so next round, I play Andrew because I want to get them below five dice if I possibly can. But I get no hits and two automatic hits. Um, and then at this point, my opponent takes two regulars instead of losing an elite. And so I'm like, okay, clearly they have um, Pits of Mordor, which lets them muster... Um, two regulars in there that seems the most likely thing and so for that reason i definitely want to keep pressing and now they only have three dice that they're rolling back at me so i feel like i should be able to make it um again i don't know what the odds are they have five hit points i have nine effectively eight when i press um but i have a sudden strike also so i sudden strike my sudden strike misses and then i get one hit on my 10 dice um they roll back and get two hits against me uh, because I have two captains of the West, I can go down to only three um, three elites, but I still roll five dice. Uh, I press again here, and I play Brave Stand to reduce um, their number of dice down to one. Um, and I get two hits here, and they get no hits. And so now I'm looking at two regulars against, um, you know, two more, three more rounds of combat. I guess two more rounds of combat. I press again. Um, and I play Heroic Death here because I want to make sure my elite um, elven unit survives so that I can press again. I get one hit. My opponent gets two hits. So Boromir goes bye-bye. And now I'm only rolling um, four dice, but I have four leadership. And I press the, for the last time and um, have eight dice to roll a six, and I don't roll a six. And so that regular unit survives, and um, I don't remember how many rounds of combat that is, but that was an absolutely epic battle in Moria. I looked later, and I rolled 65 combat dice. Um, and if you roll 65 combat dice, you're, uh, and, I, and I had two automatic hits, um, the odds of not getting at least eight sixes is only 10%. So 
So on 65 dice, I needed, I needed eight sixes and I only got seven sixes. So 10% chance of that, you know, that could happen. If I had, if I had played, if I had pressed, you know, one fewer time at the beginning and used a second die, maybe that would have been better. You know, obviously it would have been great. I would have taken Moria. Moria would have held. I still have a heroic death. So yeah. All right. My opponent obviously plays Pits of Mordor now. And uh, I know that I'm not going to be able to win this round. There's just no way I can take that, I don't think. Um, my opponent uh, attacks into us Gilead, which I feels a little risky because I could have gotten, you know, one of my regulars could have survived that. Um, and then I would have been able to retreat into Minas Tirith. So um, I muster, interesting, I muster a, my last leader into Minas Tirith, and I guess I'm just hoping that Minas Tirith holds. Um, and then my opponent musters an elite into North Dunland. I get another leader in Lorien. I'm sort of re, um, gonna try and re uh, supply. And um, they get another elite into North Dunland. And at this point, I do some army movements. I bring my army out of Dol Golder because my opponent is just not going that way at all. And then my opponent attacks into Moria. It's a little confusing to me. I'm wondering why they're not just trying to take Minas Tirith here um, instead of worrying about Moria. But I guess they're still a little worried about Moria. And I mean, if they do manage to take care of this, then obviously that's good. My opponent attacks from North Dunlin to Moria, they get two hits on fives. That's obviously not good for me. Um, I get one hit, uh, two hits back on on more dice. And um, I go down to one, they press, and then I obviously retreat. And now they have a full contingent in Moria again, which I'm not happy with. Um, and then I use my Will of the West to get Gandalf into Minas Tirith because um, I know that I'm not winning this turn and therefore I can look ahead and see I need Minas Tirith to survive next turn. So um, that's important. I have one regular left to muster into Lorien if I need to and um, now Minas Tirith goes under siege and I pass, Minas Tirith get, gets attacked um, I play heroic death here because I was worried that like fighting th that this strategy card was actually some sort of a uh, like deadly strife. So I play heroic death. They get only one hit, one hit, um, and so I lose my Gondor a leader instead of Gandalf, um, and then they sacrifice four units to onslaught, which is obviously correct. This is a great way to play around Gandalf, um, but they only get one hit. Obviously, that's you know below expectation for them, but I still have four regulars in there, and then they press here, and um, you know I don't under I think they're they're thinking there. I'm assuming what they were thinking was, um, I had these ten regulars, they're gonna go attack Minas Tirith, so it doesn't really matter if I lose these two units, but. I think this is probably a mistake. They're doing an automatic hit to themselves and um, it, it I could potentially get out of the siege. It's not crazy that I could get two hits on five dice right here and they lose their Nazgul. Um, so I think that's kind of a risky press that they don't that they don't really need to do. Um, to be fair, it is getting late. We're like it's probably like 2 a.m at this point and it's turn 10 of this pretty crazy game. Um, they don't play any card. And then they roll two sixes. <laughs> so, you know, Gandalf and Minas Tirith was feeling pretty good. But those two guys just were like, I was in the mood to press and I got two sixes. Like that is one out of 36 chance. Like expected amount of casualties there is one third of a casualty. And they get two casualties. Um, and then when I attack back, I get zero hits on five dice. Right. And so... Um, you know, that's, that's sad. I feel really sad. I'm like, okay, there's no way that Minas Tirith is now surviving. Um, I'm going to have to come up with another plan. And so I muster the dwarves towards war because my thinking now is 
Minas Tirith is going to fall. Um, and Helm's Deep is going to fall because I didn't get these guys in there. Um, though maybe it would have fallen either way. Um, and so I'm going to need to reclaim Dale to put them back down to nine victory points or possibly Woodland Realm um, to put them at eight victory points if they come take Edoras. So Rohan's going to be at war once they once they take Helm's Deep. So I think it's not um, it's not crazy that Edoras might be able to hold um, and therefore maybe retaking Dale is going to be enough, depending on how many actions, right? They're going to have to move armies into Minas Tirith. They're going to have to attack again. Maybe they'll roll a bunch of eyes next turn. That would be great. And then I can retake um, retake Moria, get the dwarves to war, and retake Dale, potentially, right? Because that's one action to Dimroll Dale, one action to uh, besiege Moria, one action to take Moria, is that's three actions to get my victory points and then um, two actions to muster the dwarves to war and then my sixth action to uh, retake Dale. So that's my hope. It's it's definitely getting a slimmer hope at this point, um, but that's my hope. All right, my opponent uh, correctly uses a ring um, and, uh, you know, I'm just hoping a bunch of eyes next round. All right, I draw red arrow you know, I'm happy to see scouts because that increases my chances of maybe surviving in, in Edoras. Um, and Red Arrow is, yeah, Red Arrow is good. And then um, my opponent rolls only one eye. Um, and, you know, expected number of attacks. Uh, well, I guess three attacks. That is slightly below average for, for attacks, but they still have a ring. Um, and I roll... A good number of attacks, which is great, but only one muster, which means I'm going to have to use my last ring to get the dwarves to war to be able to attack Dale, uh, which is not what I want to see. And furthermore, if they put Rohan to war and I have to put the dwarves to war, now they can muster the Mouth of Sauron and turn one of these extra musters into an extra attack um, this round. So... Um, you know, I wish I had rolled just one more muster and then I could have not used my last ring here. Um, and now now is the round that I get five attacks when, um, you know, I needed some attacks. I needed three uh, or four maybe. So it's not it's not bad, but I would have liked one extra muster. Okay, so I move into Dimrald Dale. Um, my opponent musters a Nazgul into uh, Moria and... I besiege it before they get to muster anymore. And I, oh, right. Here's the other thing. I have to um, be prepared to um, get a regular into Lorien. And the reason for that is they can just march this dude from Fords of Eisen into Lorien. They have enough movement to do that. That's one, two, three movement. Um, and so. I have to be able to, my plan was to just muster the last Elven regular in there, but I only have one muster, which I have to use to get the dwarves to war, and then my ring to turn this character die into my second muster to get the, the dwarves all the way to war. Um, and so uh, I leave a leader and a regular behind in Dimrald Dale so that I can use a character die to... Um, go into Lorien. Now, the reality is I don't actually have enough dice to defend all the places that I need to defend. If my opponent takes Helm's Deep and they take Minas Tirith and then start marching towards Lorien, I'm not going to be able to both get the dwarves, take Moria, get the dwarves to war, retake Dale, and then also have an extra die to move somebody into into Lorien. So I, I don't know. Maybe they have enough dice to... Um, Maybe they can't do all that, but I kind of feel like they can. So um, I guess we'll see. They use a ring here to move armies, to move Nazgul. Okay, what just happened? They moved Nazgul into Moria. So I'm kind of happy to see that. You know, obviously I don't love, I don't love fighting against four leadership. But I have chances. Like it's not crazy that this army could could defeat 
could get five hits in the number of attacks that they have. And I'm happy to see they don't seem to be marching toward Lorien. So I have to pass a little bit to wait and see exactly what's going to happen. That's that's my thinking here. All right, so they move armies. It looks like they're going for Edoras and Minas Tirith, and they're leaving Lorien alone, which means that my plan to uh, take Moria retake Dale, that's going to work. Like that would be enough to keep them at nine and I would be at four. All right. So I try and pass again, but I can't. And at this point, I um, just try and take Moria because I know that I have to do that if I want to have a chance to win. Um, so I try Moria again. Obviously they have more leadership this time, but you know, I, I don't have any cards to play, but I have a bunch of leadership. I have, I have uh, Aragorn. Um, so... All right, they play Cruel as Death, and then I get one hit, and um, they get uh, five hits. So, you know, that is not likely, um, you know, just bad, bad luck that happens. Um, I still, I still press because I have some chances of winning. It's not impossible that I could get four sixes and I'm still rolling five dice because I have Aragorn there and I have good leadership. So it's not, it's not impossible. And I still have three elites. So, okay. Um, I press once and then, um, next round they play cruel as death again. And this time they, I, I get no hits, um, and they get four hits. <sighs> So, you know, I, I, you know, I think I had chances. I had real chances to take Moria the first time. I think I had real chances to take, to take, I had really good chances the first time. I think, I don't know exactly what the odds were this time, but I, I think they were decent. You know, it's not reasonable to expect that they would get, um, nine hits. Um, I mean, did they literally get every possible hit that they could get? Yeah. So they got, they literally got every single possible hit. They rolled five, they had five strength and then four strength. So, um, and even that I could have survived. Um, if I had gotten five hits, I, I, I would still would have won the combat. Um, so it's not crazy to roll five sixes on 10 dice. Like it's, it's relatively unlikely, but okay. So, you know, that happened. Uh, obviously I'm not taking Moria. Um, probably safe for me to concede at this point. Um, you know, I, I could concede here, but my feeling is don't concede. It's, it's a tournament game. Let's play on and see what happens. So, um, my opponent takes, uh, Minas Tirith. I am sad about Gandalf dying, but that's how it goes. And, uh, I go ahead and do my plan to muster the dwarves to war so that my opponent doesn't win this game, uh, this round. Um, so they take out, um, Helm's Deep as expected. And then on my last action, I retake Dale. Okay. I don't leave anybody in Erebor because they just don't have that many action dice. And now the dwarves are at war. So I can muster more in Erebor if they try and take it. Um, okay. So what is there to do? I'm down to five dice. My opponent, um, rolls two eyes and I just don't get that many attacks. Um, you know, we would expect on five dice, four times five is 26 is the number of attacks we would expect. That's between three and four attacks. And I only get two. And now I don't have any, um, I don't have any eyes. I don't have any uh, rings left because I had to use my last one to um, get the doors to war to avoid loss last round. And so now what I'm looking at is, okay, they're going to march into, they can take Lorien, they can, they can take Edoras, um, they can certainly take Edoras, and so I need to either somehow hold Edoras, which is going to be quite hard, um, or I need to plan to retake Woodland Realm, to retake those points, so, um, and I only have two attacks, which means one attack is into Woodland Realm and the second attack is to, you know, capture Woodland Realm. And that means I'm not making any progress on my on my military victory, which again is pretty far-fetched, but maybe theoretically possible. I don't know. Um, okay, so I go ahead and muster more into Dale. 
Um, my opponent reinforces Moria just to be, you know, <laughs> really, really sure. And quite honestly, I'm happy to see that because it means I have a chance to take Wilden Realm. Maybe next round I'll have a chance to bring, you know, North Downs and Bree and Rivendell into Moria and make one more chance at Moria. Who knows? Okay, so I muster more into Dale and I uh, get Edoras ready just to put up some fight. And then my opponent attacks out of Moria into Aragorn. You know, okay, I think that makes sense because um, because why not why not try and kill Aragorn? Um, it's a little risky because I have sudden strike, and so it's and, and oh, and I have Legolas in here now. So again, I'm rolling four dice with four leadership. So potentially four hits. It's not crazy to get four hits there. And with Sudden Strike, I could potentially get, you know, four, you know, more than that. And it's their action. So if on this attack, we annihilate each other, which is, you know, relatively unlikely, but it could happen if we annihilate each other, I can then move in with this Gondorian unit from Dimraldale into Moria. So again, I'm given another chance to take Moria. Um, it, maybe I could have played heroic death here first round one and then, um, assume my opponent would not get too many hits and then press to the next round. Um, but it was late and I thought, okay, I'm just going to go for it here. And I felt like if they did three hits, I would lose Aragorn and then they might not press anymore because I think mostly they just want to get rid of my fifth action die. Um, I don't know. Maybe it would have been better to play Heroic Death first and then hope that they press to a second round. Um, but I just play Sudden Strike right here. So they play Words of Power. They cancel Aragorn. I still have plenty of leadership, but I'm only going to roll three dice. But I still have a chance here. So um, I roll my leadership and I get two hits, not five hits. You know, they got five hits when they attacked, <laughs> when they were defending in Moria. Maybe I could get five hits, um, but I get two. So they re they get rid of their elite, um, and then they roll enough hits to, um, to eliminate that army. Um, I do get two hits back, and so they're down to two regular units, but obviously uh, down to four dice is going to be pretty tough for me. Um, and then they muster up again. Um, I am happy to have scouts because, uh, I need to be able to defend Lorien from, from this army. So, uh, I, my plan is going to be to retake Woodland Realm. I have to do it that way. And, um, that's how it goes. I just didn't roll enough attacks to do anything else. They attack into Dimraldale. I obviously play scouts at this point and retreat safely into Lorien. And then, um... I would love to be able to muster in Lorien here, um, but, and maybe, maybe I should have, um, maybe I should have, instead of mustering into Edoras, I could have done that at some point in this turn to have two regulars there, but um, I think I wanted to save it for Rivendell in case these two units were going to come out and retake Mor uh, Moria and... And I thought, I thought I probably still had time to muster into Lorien. Anyway, maybe I should have done that. And then I would have had two regulars and I don't know what they would have done here. Um, there's so many, there's so much like sort of just long odds at this point, but you know, you got to play to your outs. Either way, I have to retake. I know that I have to retake um, some other victory points this round because otherwise they're just going to uh, recapture uh, or come capture uh, Edoras. Or at this point, they could they could capture Lorien in one in one attack. Um, okay, so um, I attack Woodland Realm and defeat it, and then they move Nazgul into Helm's Deep, knowing that they're not going to win this round anyway. They're just going to be prepared. Um, I did play. Path, there was a moment that I played Path of the Woses. Um, as my combat card, I think in Moria, I maybe could have saved it to do some tricky things, but at this point, Shadow has so many victory points, um, and they they have enough units around in um, 
in uh, Gondor that it's probably not going to help much, even though Umbar looks a little undefended. Um, this this army in Lamadon can just come and deal with that. So I don't think that's a real path to victory. There's so many things that I, I don't really have any chances at this point, but I'm not I'm not completely giving up. Uh, just in case, who knows? Um, they could roll a bazillion eyes. I only have four dice now. I roll two attacks. Obviously, pretty sad. Um, my opponent plays New Powers Rising. I pass. Um, oh, and by the way, at, at any point at this point, they could have gotten Mouth of Sauron, but I think they just forgot about Mouth of Sauron. Um, and now they come to take Edoras. I muster a little in Edoras and Dale. And um, then I go ahead and play Aomer to buff up Edoras. Still have not drawn a single Ent. Obviously, Ent cards would be useful in some of these combats. They attack Edoras. Um, I play Heroic Death here because I need I need Edoras to hold against this, I guess. I don't know. They get two hits, and then I get one hit. They press, and I stay. And then they get two hits, and I get four hits. So obviously I would have much preferred those four fives in the battle up in Moria. At this point, it's, I think, a little too little too late, um, but who knows? So um, I pass, and then my opponent has no musters. They have one ring left, um, but I start moving this army out maybe to go to Mount Gundabad. I don't know. And then this army in Trollshaws, maybe to Moria. Who knows? Um, just doing crazy things. My opponent plays Shadow is Moving and, um, oh no, sorry, they just drew a strategy card and drew into Shadow is Moving. Wow. Okay. So that was a good time to draw it. Um, they now play Shadow is Moving, fill up, uh, fill up Moria and um, get prepared, I guess, to take to take Edoras. Um, I got King Brand's men and I have two attacks. So my only hope is to take Moria. So I just go ahead and um, attack Moria because why not? It's theoretically possible that this army could take it. Um, and then they play Rage of the Dunlandings. Oh, they, they think about playing Rage of the Dun No, they play Rage of the Dunlandings to um, go into Holland. And like, at this point, I, you know, the game's over. Um, there's some weird theoretical thing where um, I can put a, a regular in Rivendell, my last regular in Rivendell with this muster, um, and then these units can't take it. Um, but I think that's pretty low odds. Um, and they have so many attack dice. But I'm playing on, unfortunately, it's super late, and I just attack straight into Moria, again because just of course why not um but probably what was better would have been to play spirit of mordor so it was just it was just a mistake it would have been super cool to take moria um with spirit of mordor i could i could get three hits on fives it's certainly possible but i just attack in and it's late it's i just it's just a mistake um so i play shield wall here and um they get no hits, I get one hit, I press, and then I get no hits, and then they get one hit, and then that's that. Um, that was my last attack for the turn. But then I realize, oh, you know, okay, <clears throat> I can concede now, but what I should have done was play Spirit of Mordor, and then we redo it, and um, I get one hit. So in this alternate reality where I play Spirit of Mordor, um, I still only get one hit, and then at this point I concede. Um, there's no way that I'm going to be able to hold enough. I'm not going to be able to, um, you know, with the attack that I actually made, that's not going to, you know, withstand anything. They can take, um, they can take Lorien, uh, they can take Rivendell, they can take Edoras. Um, I don't have any, you know, no force pool left. So, um, that was the game. It was, I had, uh, Moria was my downfall. I had many, many chances in Moria. Um, and just couldn't do it. There were a couple of key turns where the early game I could I had a chance to take out 
um, Mordor. I had a chance to take Moria once. I had a chance to take Moria twice. My opponent even gave me a chance to take Moria a third time and a fourth time. Um, and it just never happened. So that was the game. I hope you enjoyed it. It was an epic, epic battle. I, I think I played relatively well. I liked that I switched to a military victory strategy. And you could see I had real chances with a military strategy. Um, and my opponent pretty quickly stopped putting, you know, any eyes in. And, um, you know, I think they defended relatively well. There weren't any like huge, huge mistakes. Um, and, it, and it's just, it's hard to defend everywhere. Shadow has a lot of strongholds um, and you just can't defend them all at all at all times. So if you feel like Shadow made any big mistakes, um, you know, I welcome, uh, you know, please comment. If you feel like I made um, any big mistakes, uh, please, please comment. Uh, I hope it was a fun game. Let's look at um, the statistics. So um, it's funny how even the combat dice were. Um, I think normally these are reversed um, for a replay. So I'm going to assume these are actually free people. These are actually free people numbers and the, these are shadow numbers. Um, I, we could, we could try and double check that. Um, I will analyze it afterwards and find out if these are, if these are reversed, but you can probably assume these are reversed. These are actually my, my, um, combat dice and these are shadows combat dice. I didn't realize they were plus 10 on sixes. Um, though it's possible these are mine. Okay. Uh, you can see how low I was on, um, attacks, um, minus five on armies, minus six on characters and plus three on wills. That's a net of plus minus eight on attacks had a bunch of extra mustering that I couldn't really effectively use for some parts of the game. And, um, my opponent had a pretty you know, pretty average. They were minus on character dice. They did have to use a ring once to um, move Nazgul. So um, that was the game. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I will uh, hopefully do my next. It was double elimination, so I'm now in the losers bracket. But if I win the next six games in a row, I can win this. I can still win the tournament. So uh, I will continue to do coverage of the 2021 League Championship. Um, double elimination tournament. Congratulations to my opponent. Fun, really fun game. And um, hopefully we'll meet again in, uh, in the finals after I make it through the whole loser's bracket. We'll see. Thanks so much. Bye.